I'm Tara Vanveer, head coach for Stanford Women's Basketball, and you're watching Pac-12 Bay Area. Man, if we got a weekend of big time Pac-12 women's hoops raring to go on the farm. We're at Maples Pavilion where tonight, third ranked Stanford hosts Oregon State. The Cardinal looking to stay atop the conference standings. Beavers looking to post the massive upset. Good evening, everybody. And shots to him by my broadcast partner, good friend, that's Mary Murphy. All right, let's set the table for this one. Last weekend, Stanford bounces back. Two really big time wins over nationally ranked foes. Oregon State upsetting Oregon, and it was much more than just a win over their rivals. It really was for Oregon State. It was a, a season defining and redirecting win over Oregon, big time in front of about 6,000 fans at Gill. And so the challenge here tonight, can you beat another nationally ranked team? You've beaten UCLA, you've beaten Oregon, and they're already in the NCAA tournament, according to Charlie Cream in this week's bracketology. This game would go a long way for Oregon State. Oregon State has two of the best freshmen in the Pac-12. Tamia Gardner has only played a few games because of injuries, but oh, has she been special? Yep, that's exactly right. Four games in her college career, 6'3 freshman, and she is freshman of the week and so much more. Destined for greatness, mid-range, long-range, runs the floor like a guard, terrific hands down low. How about a little step back over 6'8 Philly Chase? She can do it all. Stanford's veteran Haley Jones, Pac-12 Player of the Week and National Player of the Week. Yeah, All-American, does it all. A tremendous rebounder at 6-1, averaging 14 rebounds over the last six games. And when she gets those boards, she gets this team going in transition with pace. The beautiful scoop off the high post. She can really do great things, and this crowd looking forward to it. All right, time to get after it at Maples. Oregon State looking for its first win on the farm in six years. Stanford looking to continue its domination over its Northwest rivals. Lineups, opening tip, coming up next. What do you represent? Is it a mood or something more historic? So everybody knows what greatness looks like. Welcome back to Maples Pavilion. We're in Stanford, California, where third-ranked Stanford will host the visiting Oregon State Beavers. Beavers coming in at 11 and 8, 3 and 5 in conference play. Starting lineup looks like this, and some familiar starters. Lots of guards getting the nod from Scotty Ruick. Aaron and Yaney, the transfers filling in so nicely. Noel Mannon having a storybook season. Von Olhoff in the leading scorer, and of course Mitrovic with all that length down low. Stanford at 19 and 2, 7 and 1 in conference play. Hannah Jump, of course, that three point ace. Great to see LaPolo back in the starting lineup, that ankle feeling better. Haley Jones moving to the four spot. Cameron Brink moving to the five spot. So a little bit of an adjustment for Tara Vanderveer the last couple of games in terms of her starting lineup. Speaking of, there's the winningest, the greatest of all time, the one, the only, Tara Vanderveer. Just getting the chance to chat with her before shoot arounds with myself and Mary Murphy. Always special, always a treat. She just cracks me up. Winningest ever, and just keeps on doing what she's doing, and nobody does it better. Scotty Ruick in his 13th year with Oregon State. I thought Mary Murphy, he coached one of his best games of the season just last weekend against Oregon. You talked about what a massive win that was. I thought Scotty was at his best. Yeah, he was. It was a make or break kind of game. If you lose to Oregon, the season really starts slipping away because they had lost at home to both, both Washington and Washington State, been dominated in the paint. Well, they turned the tables on Oregon and were just uh, amazing. Plus 30 in the paint against the Ducks. All right, we just talked about Haley Jones and Tamia Gardner. They will face each other. National Player of the Week, Pac-12 Player of the Week in Jones and Gardner Freshman of the Week. You just can't say enough about both of these players. And Haley Jones, a player that can, can help you in so many different ways, but it's her ability to rebound and transition. And what Tara emphasized with us so much is how much she wants pace to improve, wants his team to play faster. And Haley Jones is right smack dab in the middle of that. How do you like Jones at the four, if you will, and Brink playing the five now? I just like her anywhere. I just think she's one fantastic player. We're underway. 
Murray. Stanford in their home whites winning the opening tip. And right out of the shoots, it's jump knocking one down. This kind of looks around like, where is everybody? I haven't had this much room in months. Jump had the 21 points and five triples, a couple of blocks against Colorado. Stanford with a monster weekend last weekend against Utah and the Buffs. Mismatch inside, not able to get it over Brink with the steal. Brink running the floor, busted play, and Lapolo scores. Cameron Brink saved that play. She saw it was going to be a steal. She reached out and taps it back. Give her an assist. Lapolo with that rolled ankle early against the Utes and then did not play against Colorado. Vital to have that freshman back in the lineup. She's such an assist machine. Oregon State looking to get on the board. Yaney, the transfer from Arizona, the traffic cop for the Beavers. Agnes Emma Nopu matching up with Talia Von Olhoffen. That is a key matchup block and push. Lapolo is going to wait. Cardinal playing very effectively on both ends of the floor to start this game. Jump, tees up the triple. Oregon State will be much more selective running the floor. I think when Gardner's in the floor, on the floor, you'll see them run a little bit more. It'll be interesting to see if Oregon State can free up Von Olhoffen. She makes them go offensively. There's that high pick. Von Olhoffen just didn't have any room to pull off the shot. Now seven on the shot clock for Mitrovic. Single coverage, Brink, and scores. Over a sensational shot blocker. Mitrovic showing an enormous amount of confidence. All right, now it's Brink's turn against Mitrovic. Good job, Yelena. And if she can steady things down low with that kind of performance at both, end, or both ends, Oregon State's got a shot. Yaney had some room and cans the jumper. And she is all about the mid-range. Brink. Nothing there on the three, and good one and done defensive rebounding by Oregon State. They have a chance to take the lead. Mitrovic had such a good game against Oregon last weekend. On both see, ends. Yeah, let's see if she can keep it going. Mitrovic going away from the double. There's the block by Cameron Brink, and she's going to lead the break. Nice trail by Haley Jones. Yeah. Oh. Offensive put that not there. Nopu is in perfect position. Oh, oh. Blocked by Yaney. How about that is right. Yaney just getting better and better as she understands Ruick's system as the weeks and months go by, Mayor. Yeah, there's a reason she's been a, a full-time starter for three different programs. Never played point before, and so just trying to take it all in and get him going. Yaney stepping back, high off the glass, but back rimming off. Jones looking up. She'll get it right back. A lot of soft defense going on in the perimeter. Ooh, how do you get that up and over Mitrovic? Strength and spin. Man, how about the spin on that? Wow, Emma, and that was tough. Just shoot through the distraction. But what a great matchup down low. The size, the ability of both Mitrovic and Brink. Now that's going to be critical. So Alexis, if, she, if Eric can get going, that really loosens up the defense. Well, she hasn't shot the ball well this year, but for her career, she's a very, very good three-point shooter. Oregon State with its first lead of the game on the triple. Brink going right into the teeth of Mitrovic. Brink, you bet. Beautiful decision. Go opposite. A lot of room to roam under that rim. Find the open gap. Yelena makes the great defensive play initially, but Brink just hangs tough. Yeah, I just think then you bring Reagan Beers in, you bring uh, to me a Gardner in, so. Wow, okay. Two triples in a row for Aaron. And how confident did she look? Bad pass by Brink. Yeney gets her home. Nice little run for the Beavers, Mayor. Can't script it any better for the visitors from Corvallis. 12-8 is the count here. Five minutes to go in this back and forth first quarter. Haley, jab step, and scores. And you can see Aaron showing a little, little contest, but not hard. 
more worried about the drive. If Haley can knock that down consistently, it's going to help Stanford. Jones with 11 points against Colorado. It's the 18 boards that jumped off the page. Oh, jumped. Man. Still jumping off the yeah, page. I got yeah. you, Mayor. It's going to jump all season <laughs> off the page. I got you, baby. Manon. Nice take by Manon. Tough shots by this Oregon State squad. The confidence that surviving that Oregon game in front of just a raucous crowd at Gill last Friday. That lead dissipated down the stretch. It was Oregon State that hung tough, stood tall, and pulled out that massive win. Mismatch here, Jones. A little short on that shot. Brink looking for help deep on the baseline. No sweat. LaPolo. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Brink will square up. Right into the hands of Yaney. Calvary's coming for both sure clubs. Is. Mitrovic squaring up. She's a good passer. Eminopu just blanketing to Levon Olhoffen. The little things that Stanford does so well defensively, but if you look up at the scoreboard and you're an Oregon State fan, and you're Noel Manning, you're digging it. The well-traveled Alexis Aaron finding a home at Oregon State. Oh, just one of my favorite players in the Pac-12, started her career at USC, had injuries from high school, was a captain as a sophomore. Set out two of her first three years, COVID hit, transfers to, to Syracuse, coach gets fired, ends up at Texas Southern, transfers to Oregon State, and in between all kinds of injuries and challenges. Now she's an undergrad from USC, getting her master's at Oregon State, hopes to finish that, and next year hopes to earn a second master's. Squeeze out everything you can from this education. She is one special young woman. Man, and, and those triples, you know, it kind of goes against what she's been doing lately as Erie Offit, who's checking into the Stanford lineup scores. It's just nice for Oregon State to see a really good shooter like Aaron pull the trigger. Reagan Beers on the floor as well, and Gardner at the same time for Oregon State. Indian Navarre. Both clubs going to their benches. Nice cut by Gardner, beautifully run by Oregon State. Yeah, Haley Jones, you really need to pay attention to Tamia Gardner. She makes that hard flash from Week right into the gap, shows the target, quick release. Oregon State, seven of its first 10 mare, leading 16 to 12. Efficient offense. Rimming out, battle for the boards. Great job by Stanford to bat that into the hands of a friendly teammate. And there's Gardner, the miss by Iriafen. Von Olhoffen quiet so far for Oregon State. Yeah, has not scored. That's pretty quiet. Great defense by Nopu. Tag team defense. All the way to the cup. And Beers will pick up that foul. Her first, team's first. Nice. This is where Haley Jones is just so dangerous, isn't she? She's coming down the paint, and you got to figure out how to defend it. Reagan Beers ends up fouling her. Brooke Dimitri getting ready to check in. You're Reagan Beers, and, and your eyes are the, the, the size of hubcaps when you see Haley Jones coming at you. Well, she did a really solid job right till the end. A little too much body. So again, both clubs going to their deep benches. One note for Oregon State, though, today. A.J. Murat not able to go, foot in a boot. We're not exactly sure what's going on or what happened, how long she'll be out, but not available tonight. Yeah, I mean, she's averaging 23 minutes a game. Solid numbers, rebounding, assists, scoring. They will miss her presence. Brooke Dimitri on the floor for Stanford. All the way to the rim and scoring. Bendu Yaney is so strong, it's like she does push-ups during timeouts. I mean, she just <laughs> demolishes Stanford inside on that drive. Every game, Yaney just gets more and more comfortable. And comfort is there for Dimitri on the big three off the bench for the youngster. And that's what she does so well out of Orange County. Five of seven. I think it was against Gonzaga. Yeah, she had the 17 against Gonzaga with those five triples. 
Lead is one for Oregon State. Gardner looking for the cutter. Von Olhoffen has some room. Rimming out was a good look for Talia. Here comes Stanford the other way. Yvonne, who got all those minutes when Lapolo was out with the ankle injury the past two games. Mandon's job, just go every, everywhere Hannah Jump goes. 10 on the shot clock. Sweet stroke. Iriopin. I love Iriopin's game. Inside, outside, 58% from the floor. Doesn't take any bad shots. Quick off the dribble, and she puts it on the floor and just explodes past you. Okay, so she loses the starting job, and what does she do? Works her tail off in practice and comes off the bench instant spark. Another miss by Von Olhoffen. Tough start for Talia. Stanford on the run. You know they want to push tempo. Yeah. <laughs> Tee it up. Well, I guess looked like a bit of a shot put, but Emma gets it home. Confidence goes a long way. We saw her hit the huge shot against UCLA. Emma Nopu, you know, I love her game on both ends of the floor. Agnes could get after it. And that's what Tar wants. A little more of a Anna Wilson, Lexi, and Lacey yeah. Hall attitude on the floor. I like that. I like that. Just a beautiful kick out. And the whole time, the bench is like, that baby's going in. Fran Believe leading cheers on the bench. 4.7 left to go in this first quarter. Uh, how about the 8 0 run over the last minute and a half by Stanford? Gardner. So Oregon State enjoyed a four-point lead at one time, but what a swing by Stanford. The Cardinal leading at 22-18 after one. Another gorgeous day here in the Bay Area. But we're happy to bring you inside Maples Pavilion. Stanford on an impressive 8-0 run, Mayor, to end the first quarter. The bench doing the damage. Yeah, it's really impressive because Haley Jones and Cameron Brink were both on the bench when this crew came in and, and have just taken care of business. Dimitri, Iriafin, Lapolo, Navarre. We haven't seen Lapolo and Navarre on the floor a whole lot together. Quick whistle. Dimitri with the reach from behind Beers. That's her second foul, first of the quarter. We're just underway here in the second frame as Brink will check in. It's one of the beauties for Stanford. They've got lots of talented bigs, so foul trouble really not a major issue. How about Lily Hansford starting the second quarter for Oregon State? Did not play in the last game against Oregon, maybe but the take, freshman. Maybe taking Marat's minutes. That's a good, that's a good take. Mitrovic. Twenty-two eighteen. Second quarter underway here at Maples. Brink looking for the cutter. Jump. Room. Mm -hmm. Pick. Second left hand. Yeah. That was going down. Jump, just a prolific three-point shooter. Could be one of the most feared three-point shooters in the country. Manon. Mismatch. Big-time mismatch. Beers flags it down. Stanford on the run. Welcome everybody who just watched that epic game in Boulder, Colorado and UCLA going into overtime. Colorado with a huge win over UCLA. And Shots, Murray Murphy, delighted to have you with us at Maples Pavilion, where third-ranked Stanford leads Oregon State 25-18 early in the second quarter. So many early games in January with meeting UCLA and Colorado going into tonight, tied at 6-2 and two with Utah as well. Utah with the victory over USC. Colorado with the overtime victory over UCLA. Both move to 7-2. and two. UCLA drops to 6-3 and three along with Arizona, who moves to 6-3. and three. It is just...
going to be an amazing <laughs> rest of this season. This is as good a season, Mayor, top to bottom as That's I can exactly remember. Right. Beers rimming out. He just five. red hot to start, has certainly cooled off. Back rimming off. Brink with the offensive rebound, and Stanford will reload. Lapolo and Beers. Tara Vandiver wants Lapolo taking that shot. She is a very good three point shooter. Don't hesitate. Had the five triples against Creighton right before Christmas, did the freshman. You shoot 43% from distance. Uh, just shoot it. Mitrovic. Double team. Pocket pick by Navarre. Double dribble. Mitrovic commanding an awful lot of attention when she grabs that ball on the low post. Haley Jones comes back in, and Kiki Iriafin will sit. Tremendous minutes from Kiki Iriafin. Gardner back on the floor as well. This game's going to be quite the chess match when you look at the two coaches just trying to get the right personnel on the floor. How do you get to Leavon Olhoffen going, Mayor? I get the ball in her hands, but they're just, I mean, job one is to shut her down. There's the roll by Beers. Uses the strength, just too much. Cameron Brink. Still plenty of time. Shot clock. Favoring what Oregon a box State. Out by yep. Haley Jones. Just tr tremendously physical job staying with it. It was a good look for Von Olhoffen, but then Jones doing the work on the defensive boards. Brink wants that ball down low. This could be a new experience for Reagan Beers. Getting her shot blocked, and I mean it just got stuffed right back in her face. Gardner, though, with the save, swing it, and Von Olhoffen with another look. Brink can take your confidence and just retch it right out of you. And Beers picks up her second foul. So she will have a seat. Mitrovic back on the floor, Von Olhoffen. Stared down by Emma Nopu. Mismatch inside. Great help from Brink when we're in a scramble. Mitrovic, 12 on the shot clock for Yaney. Reverse, not there. We're going to go the other way. Jones head up. She wants to run. Even if you don't score fast, you're making Oregon State sprint back every single time. That's going to tire Mitrovic out. Brink will square up. Soft hook. Oh, that would have brought down the house. Brink so patient. That's what experience will give you. Reps. Stagger screen for Von Allhoffen. Mismatch inside. They don't see it. Gardner with the range, and she will hurt you from out there. Yeah, she will. The lead is a deuce for Stanford. Oregon State needed it. I'm talking to Elise Woodward earlier in today. Earlier today, she's in studio just about how Gardner is just scratching the surface. How good she's going to be. And as you mentioned in the open, Mayor, just out for it seemed like forever. And, and Gardner playing in only her fourth game of the season. I know. Think about it, you're not practicing for three months. They lost her. Yep, they lost her. Another offensive board. Von Olhoff, and that one splashes home, and maybe that'll get Talia going. I mean, Talia's playing around the world, and Stanford's like, where are you? And she was uh, somewhere they need to find her a lot sooner. <laughs> you can credit Mitrovic with that offensive board to keep things going. But look at Haley. Not a triple, but she answers with a deuce. Cannot, just like Haley. Uh, excuse me, like Hannah Jump, you cannot lose to live on Allhoffen. Don't let her heat up. I love that. Lapolo, that is just amazing defense by a freshman. Small space, squeeze through it. Well, Bendu didn't like the call, but the travel's going to go against Yaney. 
Talia needed that one. Oregon State needed that one. But look at the room for Jones. 29-26 Stanford. We do, and I, I think it's interesting that this Oregon State team has not been to the free throw line, and I thought with the size and the way they pounded inside that they were going to really rack them up and get themselves to the free throw line and, and kind of rack up the fouls on Stanford. That has not been the case. They haven't been to the free throw line, and the only one really in foul trouble is Brooke Dimitri and Reagan Beers with two, and she has the only game she's been in foul trouble all year long was LSU when she finished with four personals. It'll be interesting to see when Beers returns to the lineup. Brink low, deep, effective. I just love the confidence when a player like Brink takes it at 6'9", Yelena Mitrovic just with confidence. Harrell on the floor for Stanford. Bozgana as well. Nice challenge by Haley Jones. Mitrovic looking for help. Gardner with the pump fake and the pull up. You bet. You know, it's, it's a challenge for Stanford. There's just not a lot of scout on Gardner, a lot of a tape to sit and watch, and you got to learn what she does by what she does by playing. Brosgana on the floor as well for Stanford. Deep Cardinal bench. You mentioned Harrell on the floor as well. Mitrovic with the big mitt. Chance for Oregon State to claw ever closer, or perhaps tie with the three man and back on the floor for the Beavers. Same with Hansford. Man in the former walk-on. Little elevator play. Eight on the shot clock. Here's Mitrovic. Going to square. Smart play. She has come so far. From out of Serbia. Sat her first year with injury. Lost a ton of weight. Learned the system. Jones hesitates, almost loses it. Now Haley, but she's so dangerous, front rim and off. You know what I love about Mitrovic too, Mayor, is started the, the season so hot and then kind of went south just a little bit. And the way she just willed herself back to becoming a factor on both ends of the floor. I think it's tough when you have two freshmen that are just sort of breathing down your neck and you just have to, you know, get your confidence, understand your role and is she a freshman? I don't think so. My goodness. Back to the basket, face in the basket, 15 feet, all the way out to three. Put it on the floor, blow by you. Oregon State reclaiming the lead. They are up by a singleton. Six love, Oregon State run. Buck 25 left to go in this back and forth game as far as the half is concerned. Good D, Gardner on Jones. Seven on the shot clock, Brink. Into the help. And Brink will go to the line. Late whistle. Mitrovic doesn't like the call. But how about Cameron Brink squeezing through there? Mitrovic, traffic goes by, little step back. That's a tough shot. Boy, it really oh, is. Gardner comes off that screen, shoulder to shoulder. No hesitation, knocks it down. Mary, I, you nailed it with, with the no hesitation. I mean, Gardner does not blink when she's open. She's just going to take the shot. You know, there's players who think their way through a game and think about what their coach wants. Gardner's just playing basketball. <laughs> and then you take the coaching and you incorporate it into all that natural ability. She's going to be and is very special. Brent, friendly bounce, 76% free throw shooter is the junior out of Beaverton, Oregon. Just all over the record books for the Stanford Cardinal single season career. She will go down as one of the greats. More in bets on the floor now for Stanford. But for Oregon State to be in this position with Reagan Beers, who has meant everything for this team off the bench, three-time freshman of the week, the rebounds, the scoring, just the stability, has not scored in this game, has one rebound. It's impressive. And the two fouls, and that's why she sits Von Olhoff and doesn't take the shot for some reason. Look at that pass to Mitrovic. Basket didn't want it. Lauren Betts did a nice job to affect that shot. The lead is one now for Stanford. 
14 on the shot clock. We're under 40 seconds to go overall in this second quarter. Jump, rim and out. Good board by Von Olhoffen, and, and just a smidge of a difference between shot and game clock. Yaney will look back at Ruick. On another crazy night in Pac-12 women's basketball, we are sitting here with Stanford with a one-point lead against Oregon State. Cardinal having defeated Oregon State 11 straight times. Oregon State in this one. Gardner spinning, tough shot by Gardner, can't get it down, ricocheting. Stanford's got action, they've got a chance. Jump at the buzzer. What a first half this was. Stanford leading Oregon State 33-32. Yeah, very competitive at both ends. Impressive the way Oregon State was able to come back and sort of settle in after the runs by Stanford. Both teams will head to their respective locker rooms. And joining us, Stanford head coach Tara Vandeveer uh, from the Catbird seat. Coach, your, your impressions of the first half? Uh, we need to play better defense. Uh, they were really hot, uh, knocking down all kinds of shots. Uh, and we need to take better shots and make some better shots. So, um, you know, I think that uh, also we're not getting a whole lot of second shots. Uh, we need to play better, and I think they're playing very well. Tara, offensively, when you say better shots, are they in the places on the floor or people taking better shots? I think a combination of both. Um, you know, uh, we depend a lot on Hannah Jump, and uh, I think other people have to step up and knock down shots for her. Coach, thank you so right, much for you. taking the time. That's our Zayo Connection interview with Tara Vandeveer. Halftime commencing here at Maples Pavilion, and we're delighted to send this show back to our Pac-12 studios. Ash, Elise, waiting. They'll break everything down. Like Mary said, wild day in the Pac-12, and we're in the middle of a wild one ourselves. What a wild Friday night of Pac-12 hoops, and we got a good one down on the farm. Hannah Jump and the Stanford Cardinal locked in a tight battle with Oregon State leading by one at the break as we welcome you inside our Pac-12 Network studios. Elise Woodward, Ashley Adamson with you. Woo, there's a lot going on right like now. Like my head's on a swivel. Uh-huh. I yep. can't keep all the games Ooh. on track. Well, the good news is for everybody at home, we are going to get you up to speed on all of these great games. But let's start with the one that we're seeing right now on the farm. And it, it's it's a close one. Yep. And credit to Oregon State because they kind of got in a hole but dug their Absolutely. way out. Absolutely. Yeah, they trailed by as many as seven points early in this game. But they came out and shot the ball really well. Well, they're 50% from the field against Stanford, one of the best field goal percentage defenses in the nation. And when you make four threes on the farm, all of a sudden that hoops tends to look a little bit bigger. So Stanford's got a fight on their hands. Yeah, it's going to be a good one down to the finish. You get a feeling at the farm, but there was a good one down to the finish in Boulder, the top 25 showdown here on a Friday night. You saw this one earlier on the Pac-12 Network. J.R. Payne locked in as the buffs took on the Bruins, Colorado unbeaten at home. Quay Miller, what a game. First double-double of conference play for her. Yeah, 18 and 12, and she had big buckets. The defense that time getting a shot in her face, but Colorado followed her lead. Emily Bessoir knocking down that triple. UCLA within two. Fourth quarter, mm, Jalen Sherrod. Oh, Aaronette Vonley finishing it off. Buffs on top by three. Six and a half seconds to go. Tied off the inbounds. Charisma Osborne driving. Can't get that one to go. So guess what? Free basketball at the CU Event Center. Look at that rip by Sherrod. She had so many energy plays in this game. She gets that one to go. And she did get a little banged up. It looked like... Maybe a cramp because she came back in, and boy, oh, boy. Biggest shot of Woo! the night. Kendall Weta. Three points with less than two to go. You can see the joy, and that would hold up as the game winner as Kiki Rice's shot is no good. Colorado, they've won three in a row at home against top 25 teams. Hats off to J.R. Payne. A huge Ooh. win for Ooh. the Bucks. All right, a lot more action to get you caught up on. Some tight down-to-the-wire games around the league. We'll get you to the rest of those next. 
Elise Woodward, Ashley Adamson back with you. Big showdown at the Huntsman Center. Swoop dialed the in. on Swoop. Yes. He's been doing those bicep hitting curls. The weight room. Never skip arm day, Elise. I'll tell you, Peely's been hitting the weight room. Ooh, Elisa Peely against her former team. She had it going eight of nine from the floor in the first half. A little bit later, Raya Marshall. We talked about that matchup. She finished with, of course, another double-double, 15 and 11. Mm. But Peely, how about points in the paint? 42 to 26 in favor of the Utes. Peely finished with 21 on the night. Gianna Utah, Nikens. this is a statement game to their, have their offense put up this many points in the win against USC's defense. When you talk about how good the offense is for Utah and how good the defense is for USC, who is going to have the edge? And credit to the Trojans because they did come back. Destiny Littleton knocking down the triple there. USC within six, but McQueen had 17 in Utah. Able to come away with a 10-point win. Light that you. Huge win for Incredible. Len Roberts and company. All right, to Tucson we go. Adia Barnes in Arizona hosting Washington. Wildcats have won four in a row at home. Third quarter, Shayna Pellington and one. Arizona up one. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Lauren Schwartz. We've seen her knock down some good shots in the last few games. And this one was, again, close in the fourth quarter. That is a theme yeah. of the night. Kate Reese. Arizona took over in the fourth quarter, though. I mean, this was close, but then 26 points put on the board to just 18 for the dogs. Reese with the steal and the finish. 15 points, two steals, six boards for her. As Mary Martinez. Knocking down the triple, and Arizona able to pull away for a big win, 61 yeah. Martinez 54. also with 12 boards, so mm. really good floor game. All right, we'll see how the second half is going to shape up on the farm and shots. Mary Murphy will take you home. Enjoy the rest of the game, and we will see you here at the Post Game Report. What a gorgeous night here in the Bay Area. Welcoming you back to Pac-12 Women's Basketball. Halftime between third-ranked Stanford and Oregon State at Maples Pavilion. The Cardinal leading this one by a singleton. Highlights right around the corner. What a game we've got going, and we'll break it down for you when we come back. Here at Maples Pavilion, Stanford leading Oregon State 33-32. We're moments away from the start of the third quarter. Joining us now, Oregon State head coach Scott Ruick, our Zayo Connection interview. Scotty, what was the message to the troops? Impressive first half. It was. I really like the way we got control defensively in the second quarter, much better than the first. Um, I like our defensive transition. we got to keep that up. We know they're coming with a lot of energy here to start this third quarter, um, and so we've got to just keep executing. You know, I thought we settled in offensively. Um, you know, so I like the pace of the game and the way that we're, that we're playing, and we just got to get a little bit more efficient. Hey, Scott, you're down one, and Talia only has three points. What, 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 what's that message to you? Uh, that they're sacrificing. Um, you know, I mean, they're hugging her, you know, and, and top locking and face guarding her. And so uh, finding ways to use her because of that uh, is going to be a focal point this second half. Scotty, Love to get her going. Thanks for the time, man. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you. Good luck the rest of the way. That's Oregon State head coach Scott Ruick. All right, Mary Murphy, let's break down some highlights and starting with Tamia Gardner, who has represented off the bench. She really has. Just great offense. Here's a, a, a flash. No hesitation. Gets right into her shot. Elevates on that jump shot. Again, three. No hesitation on the release. Pull up. Knows exactly what she wants to have happen. Beautiful pass from Michovic. Again, the release. She had a sensational first half. Nine points for Gardner, four of six from the floor. Cameron Brink doing her thing on both ends. Attack 6-9, blocked, comes right back, finds an angle, offensive rebound two. Block shot, Mijovic. This is a matchup to watch. It's been sensational. Pull up, take the short jump shot. Attack, little step through. I mean, these two bigs are going at it. Some great matchups, some great individual and team efforts tonight. All right, you're looking at Gardner and Brink. What jumps out at you besides the points? All right, just the, they both have been terrific, and uh, Beers has not really had much of a factor. Michovic has been a factor. I thought Erie often was terrific off the bench. Cannot wait to see what happens here in this third quarter. 
How about Mitrovic leading everyone with the three assists? She, we forget about, well, not, maybe we don't, but maybe it's under the radar. She's just such a great facilitator. And yeah, she takes a lot of pressure off of uh, Talia von Allhoffen and Ben Duyeni because of that ability. So third quarter underway, third ranked Stanford by one as we go into the third quarter against an Oregon State team that has come to play tonight. They don't even look like the same team that lost to, to the, the Washington schools two weeks ago. All the way to the cup, nothing there. Mitrovic denying any kind of second chance opportunity. And here comes Von Olhoffen. Remember, Aaron had those two triples to get Oregon State cooking early in that opening half. Here he starting the second half. Mitrovic, you bet. She's playing with such confidence and composure. She only takes shots she knows she can make. Oh, and there's a foul. That's a good foul by Aaron. It was a, it was a smart foul. You're absolutely right. And Yuri often so athletic, and she's just tough to if you if you kind of. Look the other way, she's going to get positioned down low. Exactly right, just really active. Brink can be so solid at that high post. Erie Offen, the sophomore out of Los Angeles, 61% free throw shooter. And we expected a much quicker pace by Stanford throughout the first half. At times it was there, but good job by Oregon State controlling tempo. 34 apiece early in the third quarter. Remember, you got to go way back to January of 2017, the first and only time Oregon State has won in this building. It was a double overtime thriller. Yaney blocked inside. Jones wants to run. Marie Uppen was there, and she was ready for it. Look at the deep positioning, and Mitrovic denies Erie Uppen. Mitrovic just playing center field, waiting for that one. There's the double OT and our good friend and fellow analyst, Sid Weiss. 26 points, rebounds. I'm sure her mother, Patty, is down in the Phoenix area watching this one tonight. Heck yeah. And hey, while I'm thinking of it, let's say a big happy birthday to Ron Callen, longtime voice of the Oregon State Beavers, turning 70. He didn't mind me telling you that. Happy birthday, Ron, one of the greats. Manon on the curl, <laughs> thinks twice about going up against Brink. Mitrovic, I think Cam might have gotten a piece of that mirror. Brink running the floor. Here he often going strong. And again, Aaron picks up that foul, trying to check Here he often, and Kiki will go to the line. Just see how quick out of the block she is, trying to attack Aaron off that. And again, Erie often to the free throw line. It's a place neither team really has spent a lot of time. And remember, a, a bit of a leaner bench for Oregon State as A.J. Murat, one of the first off the bench for Oregon State. Not even suited up, has the boot on the foot. Not sure exactly the extent of a foot or ankle injury, but not going tonight. And she was terrific off the bench last week against Oregon. That alley -oop play with three of them. Ooh, that's right. Stanford reclaiming the lead, 36-34, just under eight to go in this third quarter. Von Olhoffen short, and then gets the kind rule, and she pumps her fist. And just a mistake by Emma Nopu. You cannot give Talia Von Olhoffen, uh, Olhoffen that much time. Brink spins into the double, dumps it. There's another turnover. That's good defense by Oregon State. Mitrovic just catching up to the place, and all right, let me set a screen. What a cut. <laughs> I she was throwing party favors to the crowd. <laughs> oh, man, look at the room, I mean, huh? Exactly. I mean, you, you don't guard the line when you're guarding Von Olhoffen. And then this one's for you over there in the corner. Cameron Brink, number two in career block shots and climbing that ladder, chasing Jane Appel. The great Jane Appel, now Jane Appel Marinelli. 
Brink with five blocks tonight. And we're early in the third. Fran Belibi on the floor now for Iriafin. Two on the shot clock. Wow, Yaney. Wow. That's a big shot. Yaney's a 22% three-point shooter, and she gets that one down to beat the shot clock buzzer. And Cameron Brink sprints down the floor, gets early position, turn, seals, and calls for it. Yaney, shot clock running down. All you can do is just focus, hold that follow through, and say, yeah. So Brink splashes home the first one. As Mitrovic picks up that foul, by the way. Her first, team's third. Brink gets a pair. Back and forth we go, Mayor. Yeah, Stanford, a team that's not used to playing from behind. Oh, Yaney! Yaney, how about the finish by Yaney? She's got 13. I think she does the 50-yard dash to get back and guard Haley Jones. Belibi squares up. Single coverage. Mitrovic certainly alters that shot. Brink is going to throw it up, and she'll go to the line again. Ben Duyaney, hard crossover. Attacks Haley Jones and Cameron Brink in the kiss off the backboard. Six of ten shooting. Wow. Yaney, one of her better offensive efforts, without a doubt. I mean, she's a facilitator. She gives you seven points a game, well over that, as Von Olhoffen, by the way, picks up her second foul. But you think about all the big games that she has played in in her, in her career, starting at Indiana, Arizona, and now coming to Oregon State. I'm going to call a lane violation. Boy, in a game like this, there you go. that one mistake. There you go. So Yaney's season high is 15 points. She scored that against UCLA when she went over the 1,000 point mark. And she's having herself a heck of a game. So the extra for Cam pays dividends. Oregon State up by a due, 6.20 left to go in the third quarter. Von Olhoffen, short, Jones goes down for a second and keeps that ball alive. The jump has been quiet this quarter so far. She can go off. Emma Nopu just clears out. Now she wants it and dumps it inside. Brink, you bet. Think about that shot for a second. On the high side is 6'9", Mitrovic. Behind with all that strength is Gardner at 6'2". That is a big-time bucket down low by Cameron Brink. 14 now for Brink. She's right at her seasonal average. We're tied at 42 apiece. Gardner. Good Brink deep. with another board. Fran Belibi. Brink closing in on another double-double. Jump, lots of room, back rim and off. Look at Brink hustling. Cameron Brink going to work, back it down. That is a tough double team and just takes it right at Gardner. The length of Mitrovic is there as well, but then, you know, the, the strength and girth of Gardner, that was a one-two punch that Brink beats. It's ah, gonna be Bendu. off Eminopu. Yeah, Bendu was... Lucky on that one, Emanopu almost had a swipe. Both teams doing a great job at taking care of the ball, just five turnovers apiece as Hannah Jump will get a rest. That doesn't happen very often. Navarre onto the floor for Stanford. Oregon State's goal to win this game, one of many goals, but one was to keep the turnovers at around 12. They've done a great job, to your point, Mayor, of taking care of the ball. Gardner, jab step, going right at Belibi. Good defense by Fran, six on the shot clock. Bendu, Mitrovic, good block out by Brink. Emma Nopu didn't want it. Brink, 
Thought she'd pull the trigger. Playing off a of Brink, playing off a of Haley Jones. Brink with the left. Damn! Oh. Falling hard is Von Olhoffen. Man and hustles to help her up. Believe you with the foul. Come on back. What a game we've got going. Oregon State doing a great job from long range tonight, Merritt. Well, on the season, they averaged six again. They are at six, six of 11. Aaron got him going early. Gardner from deep buries it. Talia Von Olhoffen has made a couple. And then Yaney, as the shot clock is running down, throws it up and says, it was meant to be. <laughs> Stanford, on the other hand, three of ten from three. That's been a problem over the course of Pac-12 play. Arizona, they made five. Uh, Cal, four of 20. UCLA, seven of 22. USC in the loss, the upset, four of 21. Utah, they made four. I mean, this has just been a pattern. They have not had that breakout, big time, three-point shooting game in a long time. Oregon State withstands some heat. 17 on the shot clock. Yeah, you mentioned some, you know, Hannah Jump, obviously, always a threat, but overall, especially in conference play, Stanford not shooting the ball well from deep. Beers onto the floor, blocked. There's Cameron Brink's sixth block that ties her career high, and we've got 3.50 left to go in this third quarter. Beers playing with the two fouls, she and Gardner. We'll try and be on that floor together as a jump again with some room. Haley Jones with that one pulls the trigger. Haley Jones, my bad, with the jumper. Look at that pick by Beers. Von Olhoffen rimming out. Beers with the big rebound. She'll go to the line. Yep. Nice job by Fran Belivi to just continue to take that screen a little bit lower and give Haley Jones some space. First free throws of the night for Oregon State. Well, you gotta get offensive rebounds. You have to pound it inside and not get cleanly blocked. But Beers is a player that can really start building some momentum. The freshman out of Littleton leads this club in makes and takes as far as the charity strike tosses. 69% free throw shooter as Beers. All of those double doubles. She's got 10 of them, but it's been a few games since she's recorded one of those. And she is displacing Cameron Brink down low. Great defense by Beers. I'll still say it, but Brink will not be denied. Yeah, the toughness of Cameron Brink is really showing itself tonight. Those are hard-earned buckets. Those are pretty buckets. Gardner's going to find Yaney. Ten on the shot clock. Manon out of her way. Another high pick from Gardner. And now Oregon State's in trouble. Yaney's got to throw it up. She almost threw it in again. Yep. That's really good half-court defense by Stanford. Chance to extend the two-point lead. Belibi. Again, an outstanding job in transition by Oregon State. Nothing easy for Stanford. Belibi whips it. Wild shot by Emma Nopu. And Belibi is flying around. That energy off the bench. Cell biology major. Maybe she'll get a master's next year. Maybe she'll be playing pro. Maybe she would go into med school. How about those for some career options? I have no words. <laughs> I can't relate to a single one that you just said. Brink goes tall. Shot clock. Yep, five on the shot clock. Beers, good board by Beers, hanging tough. And that's the kind of, that shot goes, it starts swinging the momentum. 
So Oregon State with a chance to tie or take the lead. Under two minutes to go in the third quarter. Yaney looking over at Ruick. Ten what? seconds. Just an old school grinder game. Love it. Love it. Nothing there on the pick. Gardner, she'll take the pick from Beers and cans the triple. How about that? Look, the message to future scouts, you cannot go behind a screen involving Gardner because she's going to hurt you from three. What a game for Gardner. Late whistle, and we'll see if it's Von Olhoffen that picks up her third. Battling with Fran Belibi. How about the beer screen? I mean, we are playing bumper cars. And I mean big bumper cars. <laughs> These are not Prius bumper cars. Wow. Our kind of game. And Von Olhoffen does pick up her third mare. So Prechtel will check in for Stanford. Good, yeah, good minutes from Belibi. Big time. Lapolo back on the floor for the Cardinal. How about the screen by Beers yep. for a Gardner, <laughs> for Gardner. Three. Yep. And I mean, that was, the stance was pretty impressive. That's awesome. Yeah, it was. Oh, oh, oh. Brink with one of two. Another great game for Brink. She's got 17 points to go along with nine boards, 47 apiece. Buck 15 left to go in the third quarter. This game has been outstanding. <laughs> they get Brink trying to get over the top of that. You know, that was a smart play by Gardner to kind of get Brink to foul her coming off that pick. I didn't think it was a bad foul by Brink, though, either, because if, if you don't foul, it's going to be clean and two points. Inbound, finally getting it into a buddy's hands, Von Olhoffen. Back rimming off is Beers, one and done. Minute left to go in the third. Stanford with the ball, chance to take the lead. It's been back and forth. These two boxers punching and counter-punching, Mayor. Yeah, this game is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> Mismatch. Yaney playing pretty good D. Brink, jab step, rimming out. Yaney plucking that loose ball out of the air. Beers wants it. Early position doesn't get it. So here's Yanni with 15 on the shot clock right now. Prechtel and Gardner stepping back. Gardner, my goodness, what a game for Gardner. That's over 6-5. Ashton Prechtel, who has a sensational shot blocker as well. 14 points for Gardner, nine left to go in the third. Brink tees up the three. Haley to beat the buzzer. Drama here at Maples. Busted play, Mir. This by Brink Jones. Play to the buzzer. Big bucket. We are tied heading into the fourth. Fourth quarter, 49 apiece. Third ranked Stanford, the visiting Oregon State Beavers. Remember, it's been a long, long time since Oregon State has won in this building. The one and only time, January of 2017. And man, have they put themselves in, put themselves in a position for the stunner. I think Sid Weiss hit the big shot right in front of the Stanford bench. Sid Weiss during that break between the third and the fourth quarter texting saying, I am watching with my mother, Patty. <laughs> of course she I is. I bet you are. Sid Weiss, one of the all-time greats wearing Oregon State gear. Big 20-plus point game and that double overtime victory for Oregon State. Fourth quarter, here we go. 49 apiece. Here's Mitrovic. Single coverage, Brink. Wants to step through, nothing there. Yaney's got to put it up, it's blocked. Belibi, who starts the fourth quarter, is going to find Jones. Well, that Belibi Gardner matchup is something to watch. Mitrovic and Brink, elevator for Hannah Jump. 
Jump just five points, one of six from three. Jump with some real estate, instead goes to Brink. Up and over Mitrovic at 6-9. when she decides to take that shot, the extension with that right hand. 19 points now for Brink, the lead back with Stanford. And none of them easy. Tech on nine rebounds, heading towards another double-double. You bet. She's been sitting on the nine boards for a while. That is sure to come. And remember, the six blocks for Brink as well. Mitrovic, not a good pos uh, possession for Oregon State. Brink, Brink running, yeah. You're right. Emma Nopu didn't want that shot. She was wide open. Instead, it's Jump turning it over. Yaney just doesn't make many bad decisions, right? I mean, she just comes out, nothing there. Let's set this thing back up. Looks over at uh, Scott Ruick, who's got like 5,000 plays in his head that he's got to try to sort through. And that is Fran Bolivia. She smiles, runs back, and possession Stanford. Scott Ruick is uh, not happy on the no, sideline. really isn't. Yaney kind of let that thing go. She thought it was off of Belibi. That's just an amazing play. Brenda Pantoja says the ball will belong to Stanford, and Scott Ruick is at center he court. He is at center court. Greeting his team, so to speak, but let's the refs. Is that what he's doing? Well, something like that. 51-49 Stanford. Oh, come on back. Before the timeout, before the break, Mayor, critical play here that gives Stanford the ball, but break it down. Well, it looks like it goes off Fran Belibi, Ben Duyaney. Maybe it went off her fingertips, but maybe she would have run after it if she had felt it, but Fran Belibi, like a volleyball player looking for a ball that's heading down on that spike, I mean, Tries to keep it in bounds, but it is going to go Stanford's way. Yeah, Bendu's reaction was, hey, that was off of Fran. Fran's reaction was, hey, that was off of me. I'm going to die for it. And but Scott's reaction was, <laughs> What's please going explain on? all of this yeah. to me. So the ball belongs to Stanford. It's a two-point game. Every possession That's is right. critical. Jones dumping it inside. Whistle. Blows the play dead. Navarre picking herself up off the deck. Mitrovic. That was just an excuse me foul. I don't think she ever saw Navarre. I think that's what happens sometimes when you're 6'9 and a little is just in your vicinity. <laughs> Mitrovic with her second. Teams first. 51 49. Third ranked Stanford trying to outlast a gritty Oregon State Big club. Oh, what a stroke by Haley. I mean, four point lead right now feels like 10. Boy, it does. Jones just so smooth with the 12 points. Oregon State needs a bucket. Gardner can't get home the three. Now a chance for Stanford to extend the lead a little bit more. Haley again. That's what you expect from your All-American. You come out of a timeout, and your team needs a lift, and you're just like, well, I'm coming off some screens. Let's get it going. Haley Jones with consecutive buckets, 55-49. Von Allhoffen just chasing her. Nice jump stop, get into it, elevate, and now you come off the screen. I think Fran Belibi has done a terrific job of setting some massive screens, getting set and waiting for Haley to use them. The little things that are so important and keeps her on the floor. Belibi did pick up that foul just moments ago. Here's Von Allhoffen. Uh, yeah, Agnes Emanopu guarding. Mitrovic doesn't matter. Talia von Olhoffen Ol with a huge three. Nine points now for von Olhoffen. It was massive, Mayor. It so was. now it's a one possession lead for Stanford. Oregon State needed that in the worst way. Brink, can she answer? Are you kidding? 
She's had a tough night with her jump shot, 15 and out. All right, 6.23 left to go in this game. 55-52, Oregon State more than hanging around. They feel like they are in position for the huge upset. Thought Olhoff and robbed on that one. Basket didn't want it. Talia thought that thing was down, Mayor. Just look how sag this defense is. Belibi, wants Emanopu. Wow, Emanopu, a good three-point shooter. I mean, Oregon State is sending out personal invitations in this game. We are not going to guard you. Are you going to take them? Emanopu has hit some big ones. Big answer by Emanopu. Here's Mitrovic again, the single coverage. And gets the roll. Just tough minded. Mitrovic down low. Fearless. Eight points now for Mitrovic. The lead is four. Brink just elevates over everybody. Ball is loose. Jump ball, possession arrow favoring Stanford. Look how far off. You just go ahead. Her second three, eight points, four rebounds and assists in 27 minutes. Hannah jump back on. Yep. The same with Beers for Oregon State. Well, you look at Fran Bolivi, has not scored one rebound, but high impact. Her energy, her presence, her veteran leadership, doing all the little things. Screen set. Yeah. Just so smart on the floor. Ten on the shot clock now for Brink and Stanford. The lead is four for the Cardinal. Dumps it inside. One of the few turnovers by either team in this well-played basketball game, and we're going down to the wire. Busy day in women's Pac-12 play, and the Stars were out tonight. Charlize Ledger Walker back. But Tara Wallach with the double-double Washington State, ASU hanging tough. Quay Miller, the double-double. Colorado now tied with Utah as they sit at 7-2. and two. Alyssa Peely, you see the 21. Mm. 17 of those were at halftime when she was 8 for 9. Kate Reese as Arizona, they will move to 6-3. and three. They're tied with UCLA. Neepkins had 11 in the second half in that USC Utah game. Rhea Marshall 15 and 11. The mm. Stars were out tonight. Van Sluten big before she fouled out. All right, Mayor, 435 crunch time in this really fun game. Gardner will pull up and in the face of Brink, cans it. She's got some very cold water in her veins. <laughs> Season high, 16 points for Gardner, career high. Remember, this is only her fourth game, and Gardner is showing us all kinds of moxie. Of her college career. Unbelievable. And she has been fearless. So the turnover against Stanford gives Oregon State, with four minutes left to go in this game right now, a chance to tie or take the lead. Four minutes left, and Oregon State has two freshmen and a former walk-on on the floor. And a transfer in Bendu Yaney. Beers with position, flips it up and gets it home. It's tied. Beers is like, I did not come to sit on the bench and I didn't come not to go at it with Cameron Brink. Early foul trouble and she's been able to stay out of further foul trouble. And here's Brink. Oh. What a spin move by Brink. The footwork mare. She's going to thank the strength and conditioning coach after this game because she is taking a beating. Another 20-point game for Brink. I think that's her fifth of the season. My goodness. Stanford back by a deuce. Manon. Look at Beers. What a great job by Beers. Salvage the possession. She sure does. Talia. Whoa. Just no reason to rush. Crowd 
clapping and also a little relieved that Von Olhoffen didn't splash home another triple. Stanford by a deuce, 240 left to go in this game. Did you get man, man and I think. Yeah, you are. And again, it's Polibi that she had to run through. Fran all over the place. How about Oregon State comes into this game ninth in the Pac-12, sitting at three and five. But we saw him last week up at Gill, a transformed team from the one that lost two games to the Washingtons the weekend before. And have they played their guts out tonight as Dimitri back on the floor, as is Mitrovic for their respective clubs. Jump, catch, shoot. Oh, boy. Heartbreaker there. Good rebound by Von Olhoffen. Wow. Oregon State didn't want to track me. They know they knew they needed to play transition defense. Check. Take care of the ball. Check. Ben Uyeni, check. Skaparua calls the play. And off we go to a tie. Bendu Yaney, what a game now for Bendu with 15 points. Look out, Von Olhoffen. Yaney ties her season high. Best effort yet with Oregon State. The crossover. Beats Dimitri. Brink can't get there. My. But goodness. Y but Yaney just plays yo-yo with it as Scott Rook looks and surveys, calls the play, and then executes it to perfection. Huge possession here for both clubs. Two minutes left to go in regulation. Jones picks up that dribble. Brink wants it inside against Mitrovic. Ball on the deck. There's the flip. Jones playing catch with Brink. Good defense by Mitrovic. Ball belongs to... Stanford hustle play by the Cardinals. Todd loves it. Emma Nopu saves the possession. Emma Nopu quietly making such an impact in this game. We're under two minutes. Here we go. Buck 30 left to go in regulation. What a game this has been at Maples. And the crowd finally comes to life. Been stunned silence here for a while. Dimitri. Offensive rebound again for Stanford. How huge is that? Buck 10 left to go in regulation. This is just gas in the Oregon State defense. Jones putting her head down. Ooh, foul is going to go against Von Olhoffen in the act of shooting. Haley Jones puts it on the floor. And you can see that left hand of Von Olhoffen on the left forearm right there of Haley Jones. Third foul on Von Olhoffen. Jones two for two from the charity strike, make it three for three. All those second and third cracks in this exactly possession, right. Mayor, leading to these free throws by Haley Jones, who knows what to do with these situations. Stanford, just one team foul. Oregon State, three team fouls. One minute left to go in this game. The lead is a deuce for Stanford. What a game we have been treated to, Mary Murphy. A game played at Oregon State's pace. They wanted to slow this down. They didn't want it to be a track meet. There's the game reset. Timeouts, both teams are fine fouls. Stanford, fouls to give. Same thing for the Beavs. Stanford has defeated Oregon State 11 straight times coming into tonight's contest. And Oregon State has Stanford on the ropes, but the Cardinal with the two-point lead under a minute to go. Critical huddles for both clubs. And you're looking at it right there. Last time, first time, only time Oregon State wins at Maple. At Maples, and that was back in Sid Weiss's heyday. Six years ago. Oregon State has beaten number 10 UCLA. Last Friday, they beat number 
23 Oregon. Can they beat number three Stanford? The last time Oregon State has defeated a top five team was in 2019 against number two Oregon. Here we are at Maples, crowd on its feet. And we know who Utah and Colorado is pulling for right now. You know it, baby. Here's Yaney, she's been sensational. Needless to say, this possession is critical for Oregon State. Eminopu trying to cut off on Olhoffen. She's gonna step through, nothing there. Oregon State saying that ball went off of Belibi. I haven't been able to check or to determine what the officials are saying in terms of who the ball belongs to. I think they're gonna check the shot. The previous play is under review. Yeah. It looks, off, it, it looks like it's off Fran. It, it does. She looks like she kind of punched it out. That will be a break for Oregon State. Not a, a good look for Von Olhoffen. Here's another look, Mayor. Yeah. I don't think this will take long to figure out. Nope. Well, I'll tell you, Oregon State and shoot around spent a lot of time on late, late game out of bounds plays. And we saw it's just great efficiency. And we saw some outstanding execution in the Oregon game last Friday. Is Tamia Gardner showing you why she is the reigning Pac-12 freshman of the week or what? Again, Stanford's got fouls to give, but it's one of those situations you don't want to be in between, you know, just a pound dribble or a pass and a shot attempt. If you're Oregon State, Mayor, down by a deuce, yet the ball coming out of bounds, we think. What are you looking for, maybe offensively? I think you're, you're, you're going to have it in, in Talia's hand. You're happy with Bendu's decision making. Mitrovic with the shot, you're fine with. Gardner anywhere. Manon would be the maybe the secret weapon. You're not going to guard her tough, but she hits a couple big shots in her career. Noel Manon, got two you. points in this game, but she's played 37 minutes. That's the trust factor. Career high. That's a career right. high for her. She went 36 against UCLA. Now she's at 37. Like you said, former walk-on. But you're Tamia Gardner. This is your fourth game of your career and you're looking for a shot that might upset number three. I mean, you don't, you, you write storybooks about this. You stuff. want the ball if you're Gardner and Belibi yep. is just on her like a blanket. All right, substitution. Lapolo for yep. Hannah Jump. Yep, so Lapolo back on the floor, jump on the bench. 62-60, 14 on the shot clock for Oregon State. The crowd is loud. Communication's gonna have to be Really critical here for Oregon State. Yaney's the decider. Yep. She's the inbound passer. What a game this has been. Just an awesome, awesome matchup between these rivals. On a night of tight games again in the Pac-12 Conference. 62-60. Oregon State trailing, but with the ball. Trying to get the game clock set. It is now. It's 46.2. 14 on the shot clock. Look at the defense by Stanford. Wild shot by Von Olhoffen. Flags it down. Timeout, Oregon State. They got the shot they wanted. They wanted Von Olhoffen in the corner. It's just a great time to weigh in on our jockey difference maker, Cameron Brink, with another sensational game, the double-doubles and the blocks. 21 points, 12 rebounds, five of them on the offensive end. Nothing easy. This has been a tough-minded game by Cameron Brink, blanketed by one, two, six, nine, six, four, six, two post players. And she has just been strong, steady, throwing that one into the stands. Six blocks, career high is seven. Steal. And they're gonna need 
a little bit more out of her before yep. this game is over. You're reading my mind. Von Olhoffen's last three shots, Mayor, haven't been close, and yet you still expect her to be very much in the mix in terms of who might take the shot with nine seconds on the shot clock. It doesn't matter. She has just so much confidence. I love it. I like where you're coming from. Execution. Oregon State's going to need to be at its best here. Yaney. Yaney, not there. Five second differential between shot and game clock. Stanford with the ball, with the lead. And the Cardinal will call a timeout with 26.4 left to go in this game up by a deuce. Yeah, there is a five second shot differential. Yep. And Oregon State, okay, the decision was we are not fouling. We're going to play defense. We're going to play to the miss till Stanford called that timeout. And as we talk about all the time, and the challenge for Stanford, number one, the most important thing, get the ball and bound it. We know they had the problem on the sideline against South Carolina. Let's be on the same page. Let's know what we're running and let's get to our spots and somebody come to the ball, secondary people as well. Oregon State with only six turnovers in this game. Mayor, that's a season low for those guys. And they wanted to take care of the ball and they did. But they're trailing and they're gonna have to put up the defensive effort to try and get something going on the other end if they can get a stop. Three team fouls on Oregon State. And there's the foul. Yep. You know, it's been interesting. We expected to see zone out of Oregon State. Didn't happen. Fourth team foul. And Von Olhoffen's fourth foul. So somebody else is gonna have to foul besides her. Yeah, you definitely want her on the floor. You bet. Oh, dangerous Ooh. pass. Danny almost had it. And Von Olhoffen will fall out. She was going for the steal. She can't believe it. That was blindside. I'm not sure Haley Jones saw Von Olhoffen coming. She's devastated. The pass. Bendu almost got it. Now here comes Talia. And maybe she put her hand on the hip and then came down on it. But not one dangerous play. Two dangerous plays. Von Olhoffen would have had the breakaway layup to tie this she thing would up. Have. Instead, Von Olhoffen whistled for that foul, and it will be her fifth. Finishing with nine points and six boards. It was a gutsy play by Von Olhoffen. She thought she had, to your point, the blindsided swipe. And a lot of time for Haley Jones to think about this, talk to Tara, walk around. Just no sense of urgency to make a substitution. Scott Ruick's got time to just sort of uh, kind of freeze the All-American. Jones four for four from the charity stripe. Okay, three-point lead for Stanford. This one's big. Front rim and off, Manon with the board. Oregon State needs a three to tie. 18.7 left to go in this game. Oregon State with the ball, trailing by three. But we cannot, you know, overstate the loss of Talia Von Olhoffen as a three-point shooter. Big time. And Eight. checking in to the lineup. You know, one of their better three-point shooters as well as A.J. Marat, who didn't get clearance to play today because of an injured foot or ankle. Now, what about Shalexis Aaron? Well, Blacklock has, has checked in. She's made nine threes this year. Yeah, Aaron. Had those early threes. Back-to-back -back yep, triples. not checked in. They're, they're going with their super big lineup right now with Mitrovic, Beers, and Gardner. Gardner, of course, a very competent three-point shooter. 
You need a three to tie it. 18.7 left. Gardner is two for three from Marat. Here's a good look at AJ. Yep. Aaron is on the floor. Yep. I just was going to state that as well. I think that's a really good call. Yeah, so the super big lineup has now sat down. Yeah. Stanford files to give. Shot clock off, game clock at 13. Can you get Emanopu with the block? That's a smart foul by Emanopu. The one, problem, State. the one problem with it for me is that it's on the baseline now, and I think it's, it's, it's a tougher place to defend. All right, so Gardner checking back in. Blacklock will take a seat. And there's the foul right there. 10.5 left to go in the game. Well, in regulation anyway. We had one overtime tonight. Yep. Colorado, UCLA, three-point game in overtime. It go, went to Colorado in Boulder. Beers in for Hansford. Set some screens. Yeah, you're reading my mind, Mayor. Gardner in the corner. Manon's got to hoist it. They got another shot at it. 2.5 left. This is the gift of fouls to give, isn't it? It is. Stanford just playing crazy tough defense here. You got to somehow, some way, get Aaron open, maybe Gardner. game this was. Oregon State going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the nation's best. But in the end, it was Stanford outlasting Oregon State. The final 63-60. to 60. We were treated to a good one. We really were. And boy, dramatic at the end when uh, Haley Jones almost got not picked not once but twice. Talia Von Olhoffen fouls out of the ball game. Their best and most prolific three-point shooter. And Stanford again survives. I mean, it is late January, and Stanford has been tested and tested again. Whew, that's a wrap from Maple. Stanford outlasting Oregon State 63 to 60. Cardinal keep on a rolling. Beats Oregon State for the 12th straight time. For Mary Murphy, our entire broadcast crew, I'm Ann Schott saying so long from Stanford. Thanks for spending your Friday night with us. We love having you on board. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. And up next, we're going to take you to our Pac-12 post-game show. Ashley and Elise standing by. They're going to break down one crazy <laughs> night in the Pac-12. Good night, everybody. What a finish on the farm. When Cameron Brink shots aren't going down, you know Haley Jones is there. <laughs> Woo! Those two combined for 24 of Stanford's 30 second half points as the Cardinals survive Woo! an upset bid by Oregon State. I thought we were going to overtime. I thought we were going to get another overtime game. Welcome to the post game, Elise Woodward, Ashley Adamson. That that was a heck of a game. Credit that was hat tip to the Beavs. Yeah. Stressful for both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Like Oregon State. I'm telling you what they played their tails off in this one yeah. on the farm on the road with that momentum after beating the Ducks and then they just came up short they didn't score in the final two minutes of the game and Stanford just put those clamps down and made just enough plays down the stretch but this is one for Oregon State fans that they would they're on the first four out of the tournament looking in in the NCAA tournament that would have they would have been in on the I verge mean, oh they would have been on the verge but you know what right there when you got Haley Jones and when you got Cameron Brink, uh, it's tough to beat them at home. And Haley Jones joining us now on the Post Game Report. Haley, I just got to say congratulations. I know that one. It, Elise was just saying it was stressful to watch back here in studio. I imagine <laughs> that it was a little stressful. Tell me how you guys closed this one out down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm just I'm just really proud of the team for staying gritty. Um, I think we pulled it out in the end. I think, you know, Cam came up big. Cam, 
um, always comes up big. I mean, Fran came hitting, had great minutes. Talana had that great steal at the end. Agnes was playing great all game. I think we just had a lot of contributions. Our first half wasn't very good. Um, we just weren't executing our scattering report as we usually do. But um, second half, I think we clamped down and we did a lot better. Haley, it feels like right now everybody's got you right in the bullseye. They're coming after Stanford. That's always been the case. But right now, to earn that victory against the hot Oregon State team who just knocked off the Ducks and to have to go down yeah. to the wire to do it, what do you think for your team that you are learning through this to make you a championship-level team? I think we're learning that no matter who the opponent is, we have to rise to the occasion and approach every game the exact same way. We have to prepare the right way, um, practices throughout the week, during scout, during shoot-around, during warm-ups, everything. Um, I think we're just learning that every point of the Pac-12, like you said, we have that bullseye, that target on our back. So we have to approach the game the same way that everybody else does. Does this year feel different to you, Haley? I mean, you've, you've had so much experience. You've, you've been to the top of the mountain. You guys won a national title. But what, what, how would you qualify where you are as we hit the midway season point of the conference slate? Yeah, I mean, I mean, this year is different. It's my senior year. It's kind of my last go around, my last ride with my favorite people in the world. So um, it's different. I'm taking it in a lot more. I think I just have had a different role on every team. And so this year, it's really a lot of leadership. It's playing like you saw tonight. I was the one, two, three, four, five at a lot of different points of the game. So it's doing whatever my team needs. And I want to win. And this team wants to win. So I'm going to do whatever my team needs to win. Uh, Haley, doing whatever you want to do. I thought the, sh the shot to end the third quarter was a big one. It gave you guys momentum yeah. heading into the fourth, and then you knocked down your free throws. You were five of six down the stretch, or in this game and down the stretch. You hit some big foul shots. To be clutch like that, and you're a veteran, you're returning All American, but where does it come from when you are so cool, calm, collected, where we're in the studio going, oh my gosh, what's going on? <laughs> just tell me, you just look cool out there, like nothing affects you. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know where that comes from. Maybe my dad, my mom's a fiery one, and my dad is like cool, calm, collected. So, um, you know, I just try to be out there, and it's basketball is something that I love to do, so I really try not to put too much pressure on myself. That shot in the third quarter, I knew it had to get up, so I shot it, and then honestly, during those free throws, I did not know we were tied. I was just shooting them, so I think that was helpful for stress. I was upset about that last one. I left it short, um, so I hope to get that back on Sunday. But you know, just really proud of the team, and I just you know I go for them to I go to them for confidence. Well, you got a good one coming up against the Oregon Ducks on Sunday, and I just got to give you a shout out. You're terrific on the court, but I know you got a future in media. Whenever you want one, I got to plug your new podcast. Sometimes I hoop. Ah, it's, yes, good it's good like, stuff. It's good stuff. Rated five stars. It's five stars. One thousand percent. You have ten tomatoes. stars. You have All two subscribers above. right here. Yeah, like and subscribe, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> She's so good. Dude, what check it out. It's awesome. Haley, congratulations on the win. Thanks. Bye. Oh, man. <laughs> Love her. All right. Tara Vanderveer and Stanford taking on Oregon State in case you missed any of the action because this one, man, it looked like Stanford was going to run away with it. Cameron Brink doing what she does. A phenomenal game for her. 21 and 13. Ooh. Can we Jeez. talk about Tamia Gardner? Ooh. She was fantastic. I said she is coming on strong. She made such a huge difference. 16 points for the Bees. You were talking about her in the pregame show and what a difference she makes. Ben Duyaney also coming up big for the Beavs. Up four after that. And this was the shot that we were talking about. Late in the third quarter, Brink misses. Haley Jones there. And they needed every one of her buckets tonight. Reagan Beers doing work inside, but a, a fairly quiet night for her. One of five from the floor. Yeah, and, and yet Oregon State right there with Stanford mm -hmm. down to the final possession. Brink took over at times. She did. She carried the Cardinal at times. Again, when you've got Brink and you've got Jones, I mentioned it off the top, 24 of Stanford's 30 second half points. And 10 seconds to go, they had a look. Noel Mannon misses this the three. Smart. It was a smart foul right there. Stanford down the stretch was able to close things out. Not, it, they made some big plays. And I'm glad that Haley Jones shouted out Fran Believe because you look at her stat line, you wouldn't necessarily know the impact that she had on this game. But in the end, they get the turnover and Stanford survives 63 to 60. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Whoo! Tara Vanderveer, by the way, her 33rd 20-win season at Stanford, officially. They moved to 20-2 overall, 8-1 in league play, and they've got the Oregon Ducks coming to town on Sunday. So let, let's start with the Beavs, because I think that you heard from Haley Jones, and they were able to survive this one, and she talks about all the different roles. But for Oregon State, it was 
right there, and we've seen them. Well, you know that they're yep. not a team that anyone's going to want to play down the stretch, but what did you yep. take away from this one? It was it was too bad that Taliban on Olhoven wasn't on the floor at the very end. It was. That foul, it, it, the, to foul out at the very end like that was disappointing, and not only on the defensive inches off the floor, but then you turn around and you're within three. You know that the play would most likely be drawn up for Talia Von Olhoff, and she's hit some huge ones in her young career, just her third year with Oregon State, but she wasn't on the floor to the foul out. But I think what we've seen is Oregon State, they have taken some time to come together, but Gardner gives them a totally different element where she is a scorer. I love her game, and she is going to elevate Oregon State. And watch out. I mean, coming off screens with her size and the shot pocket is so high. I mean, this is against Brink. Stop on a dime and put it up. This is a true freshman, folks, to go with Reagan Beers, who's that power down mm. low. And then they've got Mitrovic at 6'9". So they're coming, and this adds something. When they, This is just her fourth game playing in her career, and to put a game up of 16 points against Stanford is really impressive. And I think what it's going to do is elevate Oregon State. They cannot be disappointed about – they can't allow themselves to be disappointed that they didn't get this win. If they continue to play like that, they're going to play their, the, themselves into the NCAA tournament. That's how good they can be, but it's all about confidence and being consistent like that. They let two drop on their home floor against the Cougs and the Huskies two weeks ago, but yeah. since then they beat the Ducks, and they certainly played well enough to win today at Stanford. And they'll head to Berkeley to take on the California Golden Bears on Sunday, who, by the way, took the Ducks down to the wire.